Hi, I'm Ryan Gill from Gill's Primitive Archery. The following video will show you how to make your own metal trade points for hunting big game. Trade points were used in America well after European influence. The white settlers learned they could trade metal arrow points to the still Stone Age native peoples for food and local knowledge. The original trade points were made from any available metals and were oftentimes very crude and dull. The very essence of a trade point was that it was made from whatever was at hand. Although stainless steel was not invented until the 1900s, I will show you how to make very sharp and effective trade point style hunting points from the common household spoon. I am by no means a metallurgist nor blacksmith. I specialize in making and hunting with stone points, but I got my start in primitive archery by making metal points at home just like these. A true metal worker would scoff at my techniques for making points, but what I am creating here is not a fine hand forged blade, but rather an improvised point meant to hold a sharpened edge for no longer than it is needed to pass through a deer. Although I am a dedicated stone point hunter, I have in the past killed several deer with my homemade spoon points. I do not currently hunt with these since I only hunt with stone, but I am happy to make and sell these points on my website, gillsprimitivearchery.com, for those people that are not yet ready to dive into hunting with stone points, but are looking for a more primitive style point rather than a commercial glue on broadhead. Although I do make these to sell, I encourage people to try making their own trade points at home. The following video will show you everything you need to know about making these points. They are strong and sharp points and you will find that they will kill deer just as efficiently as any commercial two blade broadhead. Okay, before we get started, just want to mention something about uh, choosing the right spoon. Again, make sure it's a stainless spoon. Uh, make sure it's a pretty thick gauge. If you get the cheapest ones, they'll be really flimsy. You don't want that. You, you'll be able to pick them up immediately and tell, hey, will this make a, a, a good thick point, a uh, good rigid point, uh, or is it going to be really flimsy? And you'll know when you pound it flat, too. Um, but start by bending the handle kind of as straight as you can and just kind of taking some of the bend out of it. It doesn't matter. We're going we're gonna to hammer on it. And I just got a real easy crude workshop here. There's nothing fancy. You just need a hammer and um, an old vise or anvil or anything you can pound them flat on. Doesn't really matter how to pound them flat. But I like to turn them upside down when I pound on them. Okay, once you get it relatively flat, take the bend out of the handle. We're going to flatten the handle a little bit too because it's got some contour in it. Now just go all the way around the perimeter. When you look down it, it's going to be really wavy. So you're just going to have to work with it a little bit and try and pound all this wave out of it. Okay, now if you can't get it all out, don't worry about it. Uh, we can, once we cut it to shape, we can actually pound it a little bit because it might be a little bit wavy on the outside, uh, but not on the inside. Uh, all right, now this is actually the very last trade point that I ever killed a deer with. It's on the, the same piece there, it's got blood on it and stuff. Um, this one I think was about 125 grains. I don't really remember, it's been several years. Um, but anyway, what you do, we're going to make a, a template. Uh, just out of a business card or any kind of heavy carding material. And it's a little bit bigger than this one, but that's not a big deal at all. Um, this is roughly, I think, about an inch wide. A um, little bit over an inch and a sixteenth by maybe two inch worth of blade. So uh, any size is going to be fine. They're not real size specific, but this is probably, with a tang, um, is probably going to get you around... 125 grains plus or minus you can grind them down to about whatever you want uh, if you make them bigger obviously they'll be heavier so anyway let's take our spoon and you just want to lay this on here and don't worry it's not gonna everything's not gonna match up perfectly 
uh, on the spoon just make sure that the tang is in line with the handle and hold it down it's not overly scientific take a fine edge sharpie and trace it out and then we can cut it out from there okay we're gonna cut this trade point out and I got a uh, mini grinder here with a metal cutting blade uh, make sure you wear eye and ear protection and gloves and all the stuff that I don't use uh, and that I'm bad about using um, but you need to use it <laughs> and uh, what we're gonna do is we're not actually gonna cut through all the way through this spoon because as you cut through uh, the blade has a tendency to grab and can rip and, and really drag this thing and can break the, the blade and stuff. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to score it really heavy on the lines. We need to make sure we cut it really smooth so it's uniform. Uh, once we get it cut, then I'll show you how we'll go ahead and break them off. You know how we've scored all those edges. Uh, it's pretty close through, and yes, it discolors and, and stuff, but I know uh, real metalworking guys are going to tell me that I shouldn't do that. Um, but this is how we're going to do it. And I'm just going to bend it back and forth, keeping in mind that it's very hot. Once you get it loose, you can typically just pop these right off. That saves your metal blade, too, by doing it this way. Okay, now there is the rough shape of our trade point. Now we're going to still take a grinder and we're going to clean all this up and kind of follow those same lines because we've got a lot of burr left over. Leave the handle uh, of the spoon on because it gives you something to hold when you're working with it. We're going to cut that off last. Alright, so let's set up the grinder and, and clean this up and we'll show you how to put an edge on it. Okay, we got a, a, a coarse side and a fine side grinder. Um, Again, it's not real specific. We're not real scientific here. Uh, we're just going to turn it on. We're going to clean up these edges. As you can see on here, there's a burr. Remember, I didn't cut all the way through. I just scored it and bent it back and forth. So it, it made this uneven burr all the way around. We're just going to get rid of that before we ever start sharpening because that will just cause us headaches later. And this is a good time also to true up the edges. i got one side that's a little bit wider than the other. We can kind of eyeball it a little bit and clean it up a bit. Okay, once you've got it uh, cleaned up pretty good, uh, and most of the time when you cut these, they're going to come out just a little bit off center, and that's right. We'll we'll, uh, we'll mount them up and make sure that they're they're straight and they spin true. So if one side looks like it's just a tiny bit out, uh, don't freak out. We'll, uh, we'll work through it. We'll make it all right. So anyway. We got a flat edge on here now. Now we're going to start putting an edge on this, just a very rough edge. And we're not following any jigs. Uh, this is going to take some practice because I do everything by eye. So I try and keep the edge as flat as possible. Uh, you don't want a round beveled edge. Um, you know, you want straight edges with a pretty good amount of, of, uh, of angle on the, the edge itself. You could single bevel them if you want or double, it doesn't really matter. Okay, we got a pretty good, I don't know if you can see it on there or not, pretty decent uh, edge on there with the rough stone. We'll clean it up again with the, with the light one.
and it looks like that's the start of a of a pretty good edge so let's go ahead and and I'll do the other side and then I'll show you how to uh, sharpen them up from there okay we've got our point uh, rough ground on all edges and they're all fairly uniform they do come to an edge uh, make sure there's no flat spots on there but there's going to be very distinctive burrs and, and and you know pretty rough edges for the most part we're just going to take a regular file and actually just go right over them to just knock those burrs right off now uh, I like you can do it on a table you can do it anywhere you want I like to just use a regular file support it with my finger and then you would just want to follow the same edge angle and you'll see it polishing it up as you're doing it and be careful when you're doing this that when you're done you don't run your thumb across that point or don't do it back where you're going to run yourself this you know can be fairly dangerous and they will get very sharp but we're going to clean these up on all four sides and now we're actually going to use um, the grinder we're just going to score this a little bit we're going to bust this off and leave a little bit of a tang and then I'll show you how uh, to prepare this tang as well leave it a little longer than what you normally would because you this way you grind the tang down to achieve the weight that you want if you're if you're concerned about uh, the weights that you're using but anyway use the corner of a wheel to just lightly score it all the way around break it right off. Okay we've cut it to size and we've gotten it really close in weight to what we're looking for. If we're shooting for 125 you get it down to you know really close. I mean it, it, again it, we're not talking about it being super precise um, but we're gonna take and just kind of clean the burr off all the edges just so it doesn't scratch y'all up and then we need to rough this tang up pretty good. And the reason for really roughing this thing up is because this stainless is really smooth and we need to get a really rough edge on there so our glue sticks really well. Now not only do we want to rough it up on this side, but rough it up actually on the sides here as well. It doesn't take very much. But just make sure that all the uh, areas that you're going to glue to are pretty rough and there's pretty close our finished point we'll weigh it here and it is 125 exactly which is just kind of luck um, but yeah if you want to get real precise you just keep grinding the tang down uh, so let's take it inside and we'll show you how to mount it up now Okay, we've got our trade point that we made. And we've got us an arrow shaft, and what I've done is I've cut a notch in this shaft. Um, I just ran it a single time through the bandsaw. Uh, you can do that, or you can use uh, a hacksaw, anything with a thin blade that's not going to destroy your, your bamboo or your cane shaft or whatever you're mounting it to, it doesn't matter. Um, obviously you want the shaft or the the notch to be pretty straight and you want it to fit this point in uh, pretty firmly you don't want it real sloppy and loose because it's just gonna fight you so if it holds it in there on its own you're in good shape now there's absolutely nothing stone age about this entire process so I've got no quarrels about using um, a bandsaw or uh, two-part epoxy to glue the points in. So anyway, we're going to mix up our two-part epoxy. Really good. And we're going to put some on both sides of our trade points tang. If you can get any in the 
the notch go for it. If you use a toothpick, you can usually at least get a little bit in there. And it's as simple as just sliding it in. Make your notch a little bit deeper than you think you need to because it doesn't hurt to have uh, your shaft come up into the point a little bit. That way it's going to give you a little bit more support. If it's all right at the tang, there's not as going to be as much holding it on. Uh, and then you're going to want to try and do just like a little spin test. See if it spins true. Hold it up. Uh, adjust it so it sits in there. Uh, true, you know, look down the shaft. Do whatever you got to do to get it to line up. Little primitive spin test. Now this wobbles, it's actually sitting in this notch a little bit crooked. And that's easy to fix as well. Figure out which side needs to come out and actually just stick your toothpick right in there real gently as a wedge and use that to help true it up. And you can leave that toothpick right in there because we'll just bust it off later. So just get it to get get it to spin true and let it dry. Okay, our epoxy's now dry and we'll just kind of break that toothpick right off. I'm done with that. And we're going to take our knife and we're going to smooth this transition up as of right now. It's, you know, very square edged. And just like on my stone points and on the video I showed, uh, we're going to taper this shaft right into the point. You want it very smooth in a nice gentle transition. You don't want any any spots that's going to catch on the hide or anything when you shoot through a deer. So we're going to go ahead and whittle these down a little bit. I like to do it when the glue has just, I mean, just a little bit of tack to it. Not enough that it's going to move your point. But I don't think it gets really hard for maybe about an hour. But, you know, after about 10 minutes you can do this. And it seems to be able to cut through that glue a little bit easier uh, but you can certainly wait till it's totally cured if you want to do that and again if you want to use pine pitch on this uh, there's no reason you can't but you can use any modern glue you want again I'm not trying to replicate um, any primitive man's trade points uh, you know these were all introduced after European influence uh, but this is going to give you something else as an alternative other than shooting stone or commercial glue on broadheads. Okay. So just go ahead, scrape everything down, run your fingers across it. If there's any corners or anything that's still sticking up, go ahead and knock those down. I said you don't want anything to catch on the hide going in. Pretty easy, really, nothing to it. Uh, run your fingers over it. If it feels pretty smooth, it's good enough. It doesn't have to be quite as smooth as a stone point transition, but the smoother you get, the better. It can never be too smooth. Uh, we're going to use artificial sinew today because it's uh, pretty easy for everybody to come by. If you want to use real sinew, go for it. Um, I like to take the artificial stuff and split it down until I get about the smallest strand out of the bundle that I can because it doesn't need to be real thick. And start by laying. You can you can, you can actually use um, you could use dental floss or, or sewing thread or about anything you want really. Uh, lay a piece down here on the side and hold it with your thumb and get a couple good wraps there and just like with the stone point now but there's no notches to go through on these obviously uh, and that's fine you don't need it this tang is gonna hold everything in I mean that glue is gonna hold this point in really well anyway but we're gonna wrap it anyway because it's gonna look a little neater and it's gonna help if we do hit bone or anything it's gonna help to keep this shaft from splitting so just like on the stone point video 
don't mound it up just lay these wraps right next to each other and make it real nice and neat you know pull it pretty tight you don't need to be too gentle just be careful when you're wrapping you don't catch this point on your hand or your wrist or anything it is very sharp you'd be surprised how sharp it is even without totally sharpening it okay and that's usually about enough again if you use modern glue your shafts probably not going to split on you anyway if you're using natural glue you may actually want to wrap a little bit more down below the notch anyway this stuff's a little bit wax so you can kind of just roll it in on itself it'll stay and we're just going to take some modern super glue you could uh, if you use natural materials and using sinew use some wood glue or hide glue anything and we're just going to coat all of this I don't like to use gel because it's a little bit too thick I like the the liquid super glue because it will kind of lay itself flat as it dries so just cover everything up and if you need to take a little piece of paper towel and you can actually smooth some of this up a little bit if you want if you got a little too much on there like I did it's not going to hurt anything to smooth it like this okay now that's all wrapped up transition is smoothed out points on true it's uh, pretty much all done let's just let this dry and then we'll show you how to sharpen it and show you how sharp they really get okay we're now putting a final sharp sharpened edge on our point and notice I'm still using the file I don't use any stones or sticks or anything on this remember this is this is stainless steel from a spoon um, and we're actually going to make a little bit of a bird edge uh, keeping in mind we're not trying to create an edge that will hold through a lot of abuse uh, this needs to only hold an edge long enough to pass through the body of an animal to do its damage and then it's done this is not supposed to be like a high carbon steel knife that's going to hold an edge you know after cutting a tree down and skinning a deer and dragging it across the rock no matter what you know this edge does not need to stay sharp any longer and it takes to go in and out the other side of the animal uh, so with a file we can actually get in a sharp enough edge and microscopically it probably would be a very ragged looking edge using just a file uh, but if it's enough that we can shave hair off our arm which this does it shaves hair very cleanly off my arm uh, I have a nice little bald spot there now um, on both sides and be careful doing this that you don't cut yourself if you don't feel comfortable doing that then don't do it but uh, that's a very sharp blade and that would kill absolutely anything in North America if you put it through the vital organs and that is as sharp as it needs to be you want it to be able to buck hairs off of your arm if it just knocks a few off it's sharp enough it doesn't have to shave clean but obviously if it shaves clean that's all the better so there you have it there you have your trade point it's mounted uh, in this cane shaft or bamboo shaft uh, it's wrapped and it looks a little more primitive than a commercial glue on broadhead but obviously is not as primitive as stone um, I did not paint this at all uh, simply because it wasn't a necessary part in the process of showing you how to to put it together uh, if you want to paint these go for it um, it's not going to hurt anything but if you do paint it make sure you don't get any on the tang where you're going to be gluing to because you don't want that paint to come off of the the glue and actually separate uh, your point from the glue so paint it first then grind on the tang a little bit but there you have it, trade point, ready to hunt.